Coral reefs attract millions of divers the world over. Why are reefs incredible places to dive? Because of their breathtaking marine life. Coral reefs are home for thousands of species. And diving is a window to a fantastic parade of colorful creatures. Although coral reefs cover less than 1% of the sea bottom, they are home to more than 25% of all marine species. Coral reefs are the oldest and largest living structures on the planet. So large, they're actually visible from space. Now, more than ever, coral reefs and their living treasures are in danger. It can take hundreds of years for a reef to grow, but only a split second to destroy it. Fortunately, we can create a brighter future for reefs if we take action now. Scuba divers are on the front lines of reef conservation. We can make a big difference in protecting the reef ecosystem as divers and as ambassadors for the underwater world. During this program, we'll dive on the reef and learn how we as divers can protect the resources we enjoy. We will learn the four steps to responsible reef diving and master the dive skills we need to protect these incredible living structures. Plus, we'll discover other important things we can all do to protect coral reefs for future generations. Divers cause only a very small percentage of reef damage compared to overfishing and overpopulation pressures. But a fin scrape or body bump can add to the pressure at popular dive sites. The key to low impact diving or avoiding contact with the reef is effective buoyancy control. Buoyancy control lets you keep a safe distance from delicate corals. Why is that important? Because corals are extremely delicate creatures. Their tissue is thinner than paper. Just touching with your hand or bumping with your fin can easily tear the coral's tissue or break off a piece of the colony. The easiest way to swim underwater and protect the reef is from a horizontal position with your fins up and out of range of the reef's surface. But in order to do that, you must learn proper weighting. Proper weighting is the ability to use the right amount of weight in the correct location on your body so you can maintain neutral buoyancy and horizontal trim throughout your dive. Some divers use too much weight, which interferes with proper buoyancy control. It can cause you to pump more air into your BCD to stay neutral. Too much weight on your belt and too much air in your BCD forces you into a chest-up, fins-down position. Swimming with your fins down means you can accidentally kick and damage corals or stir up clouds of sediment that can settle onto corals and smother the colony. The easiest way to accidentally touch the reef is with your fins. Remember that wearing fins makes your feet a lot longer, so always be aware of where your fins are particularly after descending to the bottom or during the first few minutes of the dive while trying to get acclimated to the underwater environment. Position weights so that you can hover or swim in a horizontal position. Try placing weights higher on your body to adjust your center of balance forward with your fins up. In choosing the right amount of weight, Remember that your tank will become more buoyant as you use up air. You need enough weight to be neutrally buoyant at the conclusion of your dive so you can perform a three-minute safety stop at 15 feet. So how do you know you're properly weighted? Easy. Perform a buoyancy check. While floating on the surface, relax and breathe normally. Next, completely vent your BCD as you hold a normal breath. When properly weighted, you should float at eye level. When you exhale, you should slowly descend. After the first day or two of acclimating to the diving environment, you may find you can take some weight off. If you need assistance adjusting your weight, ask your dive master or instructor. 
Now you're ready to dive. Always stay aware of your environment and look where you're going. Descend slowly and stop your descent before contacting the reef. If you feel your fins accidentally contact the reef or sand bottom, practice the stop and tuck. To perform the stop and tuck, first, stop kicking right away. Second, tuck your knees towards your chest. Finally, Skull with your hands to ascend to a safe distance from the reef. It's easy to avoid contacting the reef when you swim in the right position horizontally with your fins up. It's the most streamlined way to swim and conserves energy too. Relax and take your time exploring the coral kingdom. Every square meter of the coral reef is full of marine life. Don't swim too fast. You might miss something. While you're watching the fish, please avoid feeding them. It may seem harmless, but fish feeding can introduce unhealthy food items and disrupt their natural behavior. Likewise, avoid the temptation to collect souvenirs. Everything in the reef ecosystem has a purpose, so anything you remove can affect the reef's marine life. Bring along a camera instead and bring back memories for everyone to share. Streamlining your equipment is another way to avoid contacting the reef that goes hand in hand with proper weighting and swimming horizontally. You need access to your gauges and alternate air source at all times. So secure them within easy reach, close to your body. Monitoring your air or depth should never be a difficult task. Dangling hoses can invite trouble. They can easily catch on the reef and damage fragile corals. You can avoid this by securing your equipment properly to your BCD. Take some time to configure your equipment. A clip can position your console where you can always find it. Some divers select wrist-mounted gauges because they're easy to locate and don't dangle. An octopus holder keeps your alternate air source within easy reach. Not only is that better for the reef, it's safer for you and your buddy because it makes your air much easier to locate during an out-of-air emergency. It's important to keep your equipment secured where it won't damage the reef. Just remember, always place your equipment where you can quickly and easily detach it from your BCD. Underwater photography is a perfect hobby for divers. The images you take bring the coral kingdom alive, especially for people who don't see it firsthand. That's a great way to educate the public, especially young people, about coral reefs. But remember that an underwater photographer must be skilled to avoid contact with the reef. Photographic or video equipment changes your buoyancy characteristics and pitches your center of balance forward. You might need to change your normal weight configuration. It takes practice to manipulate a camera and strobe lights into position and get your best shot without letting your body or equipment contact the reef. Practice sculling gently with your fins to maneuver into position. Avoid touching or pushing off the reef for balance. Be patient and take your time getting close to your subject. Remember, no photograph is worth damaging or disturbing marine life. Of course, never chase, handle, or move aquatic life into or out of the frame to arrange a shot. The gentle approach is what works. Refining your buoyancy skills and maintaining control of your equipment lets you get close without scaring your subject and lets you protect the dazzling creatures you came to record and share with others. Let's review the essential steps to protect the living reef. Step one is buoyancy control. Maintain a horizontal position with your fins up so you can keep a safe distance from the reef or sand bottom. Proper buoyancy starts before you dive with a buoyancy check. Step two is proper weighting. Try not to use too much weight. Perform a buoyancy check to ensure you're using the right amount of weight. Practice your hovering skills, especially if you haven't been diving for a while. Pay attention to where your fins are and use the stop and tuck method to withdraw if you accidentally touch or get too close to the reef. Step number three is streamline your equipment. 
keep your alternate air source and gauges secured where they won't damage the reef. Step number four is responsible photography. Remember to respect aquatic life while taking pictures and practice your buoyancy so you don't need to grab onto the reef for balance. But your job as a diver doesn't stop at the water's edge. Step number five is get involved. Coral reefs are beautiful, fragile, and endangered. The major problems are overfishing, development, and overpopulation of coastal areas. Dynamite and cyanide fishing can devastate corals. While pollution and discharges of waste and sediment can smother the reef. As citizens, divers are on the front lines of coral reef conservation. Educate and inform yourself and others about reef protection. Practice reef conservation at home and when you travel. Remember the three R's of pollution prevention. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Be an educated consumer. Ask questions about your travel destination. Where does the local restaurant get its seafood? Try to choose seafood that isn't overfished or caught with destructive fishing gear. Find out, does the hotel or resort have an adequate sewage treatment system to prevent reef pollution? Does your dive operator use mooring buoys or anchor safely in sandy areas? The dive industry is taking the lead in protecting reefs. If you observe pollution or other violations, report it to the appropriate authorities. Let your elected representatives know that healthy reefs are important to you. Tell them that you support marine protected areas, strong water quality controls, and other reef protection measures. Get involved in coral reef monitoring. Donate your time and travel to volunteer projects. They're fun and worthwhile. Encourage people you know to learn to dive so they too can become ambassadors for the aquatic world. By interacting responsibly with reefs and taking action now, we can create a future where the oceans are healthy, vibrant, and alive. A future where our children and grandchildren can explore one of the most amazing places on the planet, the coral reef. <laughs>